Neuralink is a brain implant designed to help paralyzed people move their limbs and monkeys play Pong. They recently announced they also want to give sight to the blind and supervision to the sighted. Is that possible? And how would it work? If you can see this video right now, that's probably because light waves from the screen are projecting an image onto your retinas, which gets encoded as electrical signals and sent to your visual cortex in the back of your brain. If that path is disrupted at any point from cataracts or a stroke or whatever, you can go blind or lose parts of your visual field. In your primary visual cortex, V1, each individual neuron fires based on a small part of the visual field called its receptive field. So if you have a neuron right here, it might fire when you see something right here. In humans, V1 is buried in this wrinkle called the calcarin sulcus. But if you unfold it, the neural activity forms a map of whatever you're looking at. If you watch a line move across the screen, V1 activity will track its movement. Here's a mouse visual cortex watching a ball move around. This is called a retinotopic map, but the input doesn't have to come from the retina. In theory, if you could stimulate these neurons the right way, you could recreate the experience of seeing, or enhance it. If your retina is busted, you can use a retinal implant to send the video from a camera through your optic nerve to visual cortex. But the image quality is not great. These implants aren't good enough to replace a cane or a guide dog in most patients. Another option is to bypass the eye entirely with sensory substitution. Your visual cortex can process visual information even if it comes through other senses like touch or sound. In one study, blind people got visual information from a vibrating grid on their back hooked up to a camera. After some hours of training, they could identify certain objects on a table. They said it felt like the objects were out there in front of them, like vision, even though the information was coming from behind them in the form of vibrations. You can use a similar grid on the tongue, which is more sensitive, and it activates visual cortex, which might help explain why sensory substitution feels so much like seeing. Neuralink wants to stimulate the visual cortex directly, and they wouldn't be the first. This implant has 96 electrodes that plug directly into V1. Stimulating V1 doesn't look much like normal vision. It creates little flashes called phosphenes. You can create a phosphene by putting pressure on the side of your eyeball, but I don't recommend it. Here's some patient sketches of what the phosphenes from V1 stimulation looked like for certain patterns of electrode stimulation. The results aren't always clean or predictable, but blind patients with this implant could use it to find lines and edges and discriminate between some basic shapes. They gave monkeys a bunch of implants with over a thousand electrodes in total, and they could discriminate letters too. Neuralink is almost there. They've got Neuralinked monkeys, and they can find each cell's receptive field by reading its activity while they show stuff on the screen. If this neuron fires while there's something there, that must be its receptive field. Then, when they stimulate that same neuron, the monkey will see a flash in that same spot. This monkey's playing the phosphine game. It's got to move its eyes to wherever it sees a flash, and then it gets some banana smoothie. Here's a map of the receptive fields of all the neurons they could reach in one monkey's brain. You can see they're mostly in the center of the visual field. The way V1 is laid out, central vision is the easiest to stimulate, and peripheral vision is deeper in the cortex. Even though the Neuralink can stimulate over this whole area, it's not so easy to make shapes and letters appear, much less an entire visual scene. Single flashes are easy enough, but cells in visual cortex don't work like pixels. Each neuron is tuned a little differently. It might respond to how something is oriented or which way it's moving. And when more than one electrode is stimulating the brain at once, the visual pattern isn't necessarily what you'd expect. Not to mention that everybody's brain is laid out a little differently. So a lot more research is needed to figure out the neural code of visual cortex and how to decode the neural fingerprint of each individual patient. Neuralink should be a great tool for doing that. The next generation device will have 16,000 electrodes so we can study patterns of neural activation in unprecedented detail. The data won't be easy to interpret, but machine learning will help us find patterns we've never seen before. So when can we expect 2020 vision or better? Elon Musk is known for his overly optimistic predictions. He hasn't even taken a guess about when vision will be restored. A more realistic goal is getting some basic level of functionality for blind patients, something as simple as helping them find a doorknob. And once the device is implanted, even if it kind of sucks, it'll be real easy to add some functions. You could have a blinking phosphine in the top right of your vision when your blood sugar level gets low or whenever you get a text. There's a saying about new technology. 
We tend to overestimate it in the short term, but underestimate it in the long term. There's a lot of hype at first, but it dies down because life isn't transformed instantly. But then, gradually, right under our noses, the world changes in ways we could hardly imagine. Back in 1995, the internet looked like a big fad. Now, you're on the internet right now, probably every day, almost every waking hour. With Neuralink, we're in the fad phase. It's easy to imagine that Neuralink could beam a TV screen right into your brain, especially if you think of the brain as having this digital input grid you just plug into like a USB port. But then they put a thousand electrodes in a monkey's brain and all they can do is show it a dot. It's cool at first, but as time goes on, it's not going as fast as you thought it would. So you go do something else for a few years, then before you know it, you look around and everybody's getting their head scanned at the grocery store. Until then, subscribe to I'm Curious for updates. My next video is about a brain implant for rats, but the implant is made of human brain tissue and they used it to control the rat's behavior. See you then. The monkey sees the flash and naturally makes a saccade towards it.